Hey friends, my name is C and you're watching here Mr. Easy. And welcome to a new video for IGCC and Maths and today. We have to review some examples of video for vectors, which is the penultimate lesson. And we'll get started with some notations, but before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we'll get started with notations. So here's how to write vectors. Some examples of vectors that you can see on textbook or any slide is bolded letters like A or B in this case. But but because it's very difficult to write in bold in like paper, we usually we usually underline the vectors. So for A, we can write it like this A with an underline, or B, C, D, so on. But if it's from one point to the other to another like A to C, we write it like this, like an arrow, and A to C, or O to A, where O stands for origin. Then we have the magnitude or the length. So the magnitude, the notation for it will be this modular symbol, like this between the, the vectors, like let's say the, the magnitude of B will be this, like so, right? It will be the magnitude or the length of A, or the vector. So the formula for that is basically just Pythagoras theorem, or basically the distance formula from coordinate geometry. So think of it this way, if we have a vector like 3, 4, like 3, 4, where this basically means in the x direction and this basically means in the y direction. So 3 to the, uh, uh, 3 to the x direction, which is 3, and 4 to the y direction, 4, is basically this is a resultant, the resultant vector or basically the magnitude. So you can basically use Pythagoras to work out the length, which is in this case, it's a 5. So 5, oops. So 5. And we have the type of vectors. So we have equal vectors. If A equals B, then A and B have the same direction, and the magnitude of A equals the magnitude of B, because they're both equal. But if there are negative vectors, if A equals negative, uh, negative B, then A and B are in the opposite direction, because one's going this way, and one might be going this way. And the magnitude of A equals the magnitude of B, they will be the same length, because it says A equals B, or like minus B. And for zero vectors, if A is a zero vector or have zero magnitude, then the magnitude of A equals zero. And for the scalar multiplication of a vector, if B equals Ka where K is a constant which is bigger than zero, then A and B are in the same direction, because it's basically linked to the first one, equal vectors. And, B, uh, and the magnitude of B equals uh, magnitude of K times magnitude of A. But if B equals Ka where K is less than zero, then A and B are in the opposite direction, which is basically linked to the negative vectors. Right, so, and we have unit vectors, and unit vectors have a magnitude of 1. If the magnitude of U is 1, then U is known as a unit vector. And basically what it is is that the unit vector is in the direction of a given vector A is equal to this one right here. So what it essentially is is that it's the magnitude of the vector but it has a unit of 1. So we'll look more into it later. So the, the notation for a unit vector is A with this little right here. We call it little we call it like a hat. So this would be A hat. It's equal to A, the, the vector A, over the magnitude of A. So A A hat is the length of one unit. So that's an example would be if A equals 3, 4, then the magnitude would be this right here, it would be 5, right? But 5 is not a unit vector because it has a magnitude of 5 and not 1. Therefore, we have to divide the, the vector by the magnitude, which is 5. Therefore, it will be this right here, 3, 3 over 5 and 4 over 5. Because then what, think of it this way. If 3, 4, 3, 4, that means the resultant magnitude will be 5, right? But unit vector is a magnitude of 1. That means we have to split it into 5 equal sections, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and divide the vectors by 5 to get one, equal, uh, one little slot right here, which is basically one unit. So it will be 3i plus 4j over the magnitude, which is 5. And you can write it this way too. And then we have addition and subtraction of vectors. So here we have the triangle, uh, triangle law of addition. Basically pq plus qr equals pr where basically the Q basically just cancels out and just goes from P to R. And number two, parallelogram law of addition. 
if P uh, like PQ plus PS equals PR and as you can see here PQ plus PS equals PR like so because what you can think of is that if it's a parallelogram that means these two sides must be the same right so if this were to be PS then this has to be PS too because they're the same length same direction and same magnitude and here we have the commutative law which basically states that a plus b equals c and b plus a equals c hence a, b, a plus b equals b plus a and the subtraction of vectors is basically if qr uh, basically if uh, qr equals pr minus pq and now we'll talk about expressing vectors so here's the vectors expressed in two uh, in terms of two non-parallel vectors if a and b are two non-zero non-parallel vectors any two vector OP in the plane containing AB can be expressed in terms of AB, that is OP, which where, where O is basically the origin to P, a point, equals MA plus NB, where M and N are constant. So if PA plus QB equals RA plus SB, that means P equals R and Q equals S. And here we have position vectors and collinear points, where collinear basically means on the same line. So for position vector, the point is always relative to the origin. That's an important thing to note. So it'll always be O something, O C, O D, O E, or whatever, because O means the origin. So for example, if the position vector of the point A equals 2P minus 3Q, and O A equals 2P minus 3Q. So in the diagram over here, the position vector of the point P with respect to an origin O is indicated by the direction line segment OP. This one right here. So if the vector OP, uh, basically OP is called the position vector of P relative to O. And collinear points, collinear means the points are parallel and share a common point. So here we have three distinct points, A, B, and C, they are collinear. Meaning AB, which is this system right here, equals BC, but it's a scalar multiple. Because this may be like two units, this may be one unit, that means we have a scale factor of one over two. Then we have vectors in the Cartesian plane, or basically an xy plane, which is what we normally use. So let i and j be the unit vectors in the positive directions of the axis and the y axis respectively. Then the position vector of the point p x y is op equals xi plus yj. And when we have i and j as notations, we call it ij notations. So here's uh, if something is i plus j. It's the ij notation, but if it's xy, if it's basically the column vector notation column. So if y equal if a seven minus twelve is a vector, it means it's equal to seven i minus twelve j. So its magnitude is op equals a uh, root of x square plus y square, where it's basically in this context, and the unit vector, and the vector. Then we have the distance between two points, which is basically the same as coordinate geometry. We can use Pythagoras' theorem or the distance formula from coordinate geometry. So if we were to find the distance between P and Q, we will have two. We need to have two points, one one P point and one Q point, or the position vector. And we can use x two minus x one square plus y two minus y one square. Then we have some examples for vectors. Express each of the uh, following sums as a single vector. So we can use the triangular law of addition or like the addition laws. So when we have AB plus BQ, it becomes AQ, right? Because this basically cancels out and this goes to here. But as you can see the next one, Q to Q, it's the same. So you can cancel this out too. That means you can basically go from A to P, right? Because everything cancels out. Therefore, A will be AP, like so. And for B, it's basically the same. We can cancel these out, these and these. Therefore, it'll jump from A to D. Therefore, it's equal to AD. Like so. So the points P, Q, R have position vectors A plus B, 3A minus B, 6A minus 4B, respectively. Find P, Q, and P, R. So in the more, uh, we have P, Q, which we can basically find by doing Q, like the position vector of Q, minus put the position vector of P. Because you want to go from P to Q, right? Let's say if it's this, P to Q, you have to go from this minus this uh, value right here 
to get this going here. So just just let's just do it to make to like make it make sense. So Q is basically three A minus B minus P, which is A plus B. A plus B, which equals to two A minus two B minus two B. Or if you factorize the two, it'll be two A minus B. So to illustrate what I meant, let's look at the point P. P is A B, right? If we plus two A, it'll be three A. That means it's three A. And from uh, uh, Q, uh, P is B, right? For the B vector, if we do B minus two B, it'll be minus B, which is what we have here. That means P Q is specifically two A minus two B. And for B, we have P R. So P R equals basically R minus p which basically what's r r is 6a minus 4b minus p minus p p is a plus b therefore if we were to simplify it it will be 6 minus 1 equals 5a minus 5b equals 5a minus b and that's the answer And the last question, find the magnitude of each of the following vectors and write down the unit vector and the vector of magnitude of 65, which are in the direction of the given vector. So we can find the magnitude quite easily by doing 3 squared plus 4 squared. And it's a Pythagorean triple, so you should know this, it'll be equal to 5, right? That means the magnitude equals, let's set this as A. Therefore, the magnitude of A will be this. And the unit vector will be basically A hat. It will be the it will be basically the unit vector, so the vector over the magnitude. So it will be three i plus four j over five. So three i plus four j, which is a vector, over five, which is a magnitude. And I just use a new color, and five. And find a vector of magnitude sixty five, which are in the direction of the given vector. So sixty five, sixty five a hat. It's basically the 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 magnitude ve the resultant vector, which is this right here, but times by sixty five because this is one unit, and we have to find sixty five units. So it'll be sixty five. So it'll be sixty five times three i plus four j over five, and if we were to multiply sixty five, sorry, if we were to divide sixty five by five, you get an answer of thirteen. So it'll be thirteen. 3i plus 4j, and that's the answer. And for this one right here, on the, on the right, we have, let's set it as b, right? That means the magnitude of b will be equal to 5 squared plus minus 12 squared. And it's also a Pythagorean triple, which is equal to 13, right? So let me just use my calculator to double check. So 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13, root of that. So the magnitude will be 13. So number two, b hat, or basically the unit vector of b, it's equal to the it's equal to the vector of b over the magnitude of b, which is equal to 5i minus 12j over 13. Right, so 5i minus 12j over 13, and that's the answer. And lastly, the magnitude of 65, which is basically the same as just now, it will be 65 b hat equals 65 times 5i minus 12j over 13. So if we do 65 divided by 13, you get an answer of 5, right? So you do 5 times 5i minus 12j. And that's the final answer. And that's it for this rules and examples of vectors video for IGCC at Maths for today. We look into different vectors, for example, unit vectors, magnitude, and some laws. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive feedback about my channel or my YouTube or my Instagram, you can comment down below and I'll reply to them. And check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or YouTube or Instagram. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emusicalisi.com 
and I hope you will find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be questions for vectors which will be the last video for the RGCSE and Math series which will be fun but until then stay safe and happy learning